Hi to all, welcome to my class number 4 on Understanding Quadrilaterals of Class 8 Chapter 3. Today I am going to discuss kinds of quadrilateral and properties of parallelogram. Look at the two quadrilaterals given. Is there any special features in the first quadrilateral when comparing to the second? Let us have a check. Let me draw a line through the opposite sides of the first. Here you can see those lines are parallel. They want to intersect each other. So we can say in the first quadrilateral one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Such a quadrilateral we can call it as trapezium. So we can say a trapezium is a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel sides. Look at a trapezium here. Here pair of opposite sides are parallel. Now what about non-parallel sides? Let me measure it. The length of that one non-parallel side is 4.76 and the other also 4.76. That means non-parallel sides are equal. If non-parallel sides are equal, that kind of trapezium we can call it as isosceles trapezium. Look at another quadrilateral. Is it a trapezium? No. Opposite sides are not parallel, you can see. So it is not a trapezium. Then what is the speciality of this quadrilateral? Let us measure the sides. Here, length of this side is equal 7.7 .7 cm. Here 4.18. Here also 4.18. Here 7.7. .7. That means here one pair of sides are equal. This pair of sides, we can call it as distinct consecutive pairs of sides. If distinct consecutive pairs of sides are equal, then that quadrilateral we can call it as kite. So we can describe a kite as a kite has four sides, that is it is a quadrilateral. There are exactly two distinct consecutive pairs of sides of equal length. Now look at another type of quadrilateral. See, let me join the line through the opposite sides. Yes, here one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Now what about the other pair? Here, this pair also you can see they are parallel. That means both pair of opposite sides are parallel. This kind of quadrilateral we can call it as parallelogram. So we can define a parallelogram as a parallelogram is a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel. Now let us discuss the elements of a parallelogram. Here you have a parallelogram ABCD. Here you can find out four vertices and four angles and four sides. Can you say what are the sides here? Yes. The sides are A, B, B, C, C, D and D. Now what about the angles? Can you write the angles? The angles are angle A, angle B, angle C and angle D. Look at the side AB and DC. They are just opposite to each other. So we can call those sides R as opposite sides. Then what are the pairs of opposite sides here? AB and DC. Similarly, AD and BC are also opposite sides. Pair of opposite sides. Now, Consider the side AB. It starts from A and ends at B. From B another side starts. 
that is from B, BC is there. Now these two sides that is AB and BC we can call it as adjacent sides. Can you say how many pairs of adjacent sides here? One pair already said AB and BC. Similarly how can you say the other pair S? It is BC and C. So how many pairs you can write do write yourself. So you can write A, B and B, C, B, C and C, D, C, D and D, A and D, A and A, B. They are all adjacent sides. Now consider the angle A. What is the angle opposite to A? Yes, it is angle C. So angle A and angle C we can call it as a pair of opposite angles. Here angle A and angle C are opposite. What is the other pair of opposite angles? Yes, they are angle B and angle B. Consider the side AB. Here, A, there is an angle. The other end also we can find out an angle B. The two angles on the end of the sides, we can call it as adjacent angles. Here one is angle A and angle B. Can you say, can you write other adjacent pairs of angles? Yes, angle B and angle C, angle C and angle D, and angle D and angle A. Four pairs of adjacent angles you can see in a parallelogram. Here you have a parallelogram A, B, C. Now let me measure the sides. 12.12, here 6.26. Here again 12.12, here 6.26. Here you can see opposite sides of the parallelogram are equal. Now if you take any parallelogram, you can see the opposite sides are equal in all the cases. So we can write as the opposite sides of a parallelogram are of equal length. This is the first property of a parallelogram. So in the properties of parallelogram, the opposite sides of a parallelogram are of equal length. Now let us see the next property. Now look at the measures of opposite angles. Here the angle you are getting angle A is equal to 39 degrees. Now let us measure angle C. Here angle C you again you are getting 39 degree. That means opposite angles are equal here. Now what about angle D and angle angle B? That also you can see they are equal 140 140 now if you take any parallelogram you can find the opposite angles are equal in all the cases the next property we can write as the opposite angles of a parallelogram are of equal measure now let me Take the measure of any two adjacent angles. Here angle A is equal to 57, angle D is equal to 123. You just add 57 and 123, what will you get? Yes, 57 plus 123, you will get 180. Now let us change the position. In the all the case, you will get the sum is equal to 180 degree. So we can say the adjacent angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Supplementary means sum of the angle is equal to 180 degree. Now let me draw the diagonal AC and 
db. Let each intersect at a point O. Now let me measure the length do. Do you will get it as 8. Now what about OB? That also equal to A. That means O divides BD into two equal parts. Or we can say it is bisecting. Okay, O bisect DB. Similarly, let me measure the length AO. It is 11. What about OC? That also 11. That means O divides AC into two equal parts or you can say it is bisecting each other. So the fourth property we can write it as the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. That means DO is equal to OB here, AO is equal to OC. That is all for today's class. Have a nice day.